Are you tired of spending your time and money chasing strategy after strategy only to discover what worked 10, 5, or even 2 years ago is not working now? Things shift fast in the online space, and if you're not keeping up, you're getting left behind. It's time for something different. Welcome to the Marketing, Media, and Money Podcast, where every single episode will be jam-packed with proven, profitable strategies, behind-the-scenes secrets, and what's working now resources. From industry experts and global influencers to help you scale your business, shorten your learning curve, and stand out in a crowded, noisy marketplace. And now, your host, award-winning marketing and media strategist and international speaker, Patty Farmer. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of the Marketing Media Money Podcast. I'm your host, Patty Farmer, and I'm looking forward to sharing today's industry expert with you. And today's kind of a special day because we're not just having an industry expert. We are actually having our sponsor. Yes, you heard that right. For the first time in three years, Marketing Media Money has brought on a sponsor. Why? Because I love everything Exacta Corporation stands for. I love how they're showing up in the community, in the lives of the people we serve, and specifically in the lives of the people who listen to our podcast and read our magazine. So I went to the president, Dennis Hill, and said, I'd like to interview you so that we can talk a little bit about Exacta Corporation and why you need to learn more about it yourself. So what we're going to be talking about today is respecting data privacy and ownership of customers. And you are going to want to make sure that you have a pen and paper because you're going to get a lot of information out of this podcast. So let me tell you a little bit about our guest. So Dennis Hill is a number one best-selling business author, a pioneer in technology, higher education, human resources, and a serial entrepreneur running or board member for 22 companies and organizations. He has many accomplishments, but prefers to talk about his current activities, which focus on highly integrated CRM solutions for small and mid-sized businesses and data privacy and ownership tools for personal and family use. He has worked for nearly four decades on the development of integrated business systems, including workforce recruitment and human resources, ERP and CRM with a unique design focus on data security, privacy, and data ownership. So he's not just talking the talk, he's walking the walk. So thank you so much for being here with us today, Dennis. Uh, it's my pleasure, Patty. Real pleasure and honor to be with you and your uh, subscribers. Love it. So let's just dive right in. So I am sure with all these, usually I say years, but in your case, decades of experience, right? Why exact a corporation? Tell us a little bit about what's the one thing, you know, that you wish you had known when you began your career with exact a corporation and why you chose it in the first place. That's a great question. My business relationships have always been long-term, and when you look back on 40 years, that's a lot of friends and a lot of business uh, folks that, well, at least in the last eight or nine years, have started to party in this life. So I've grown with them as they've grown older, and, and I've been by their side on technical, eventually business, and in the later years, even their estate planning issues. So it comes naturally to, uh, for me at least, to expect the unexpected. And foreknowledge is not something I would wish for. So in a sense of knowing what I knew then, what I know now, I think the best insight in business comes from the actual ordinary ebb and flow of a day-to-day -day relationship throughout the journey. And working with the founder of Exacta Corporation, who passed away two years ago, is no exception. Absolutely. So why for you is empowering individuals to recover personal privacy and securely maintaining access over personal information and private records so important and specifically so important to Exacta. Another good question. Boy, this is going to be an interesting conversation. These are really long, <laughs> tough questions. 
the reality is that I think we're all kind of fed up with the last, uh, you know, 30 years or so of having our information exploited and sold behind our backs and used for marketing us um, into uh, controlled, what I would call conditional programming. I think there's just a general lack of confidence in the ability of big companies and organizations, even our government, to secure our personal privacy. And so my work in technology actually began when I was a professor in the 80s in computer security and at the same time relationship management software. And uh, that's where I coined the phrase, the law lags technology. I stated it in an interview in 1987 uh, that people, the digital consumers of the day and today, and the makers of technology uh, would only embrace and invest in security in response to major data breaches. And in fact, we can go back to that article and see exactly for the last 34 years or so that that's been really true. Uh, vendors on the digital landscape have been given a pass in terms of their responsibility and consequences for breaching our, our rights to privacy. And in the last year or so, laws have begun to emerge uh, in the United States with the California Consumer Privacy Act and as far back as maybe four or five years ago over in Europe to assert or reassert our individual right to our privacy, even in the digital space. So with that said, we're at a point now for the first time in technology development, even over the last uh, 50, 60 years of computer work, where we have the ability with 5G networking and blockchain to actually implement security of one's personal information that really is hacker proof and impenetrable and also not open to surveillance by big tech. So our work at Exacta in this field stands apart from most investigations uh, that you see people involved in these technologies by developing new applications around 5G and blockchain. 5G today to most people is just an upgrade in their cellular plan. But as far more important than just broader bandwidth and faster speeds. It is all about brand new security protocols that will allow you to function securely with fewer or less password requirements, low risk of hacking and listening in on our digital conversations, all things that are going to supplant the existing protocols on the internet, which by the way, most of your listeners may not know this, have been based on technology from World War II. Wow. That says something right there, right? You know? Right. That's right. I mean, it's been a long time. What, 70 years, the technology's been at the heart of uh, communications, radio communications, and so forth. And that was just simply adopted into the internet design. So for the first time, we have blockchain, which was well proven in the Bitcoin cryptocurrency industry, and 5G, which if you've ever watched the television for more than an hour, I'm sure a major wireless carrier has advertised 5G services. People don't really understand what the impact is, but it impacts everything, including this emerging internet of technology, internet of things, and as I view it, the internet of people. Wow. So what technologies does Exacta leverage to create a safe social network that is impenetrable to hacking, copying, or stealing by someone without authority? Great question. Once 5G is fully implemented, your ability to communicate between your device, whether it's a desktop computer or Mac, a handheld uh, tablet or a cell phone, your ability to communicate securely between yourself and the data you're accessing uh, will be based off of what's called isolated functional groups. This basically creates a dedicated connection between your application and your data. And in many cases, the data might even reside on your device, right? Not just up in the cloud and the blockchain, but even on your device. And that creates a communication link that is not decryptable, not easy to listen in on, by third parties, and by virtue of the fact that it's not mingled with other people's messages as it has been in the past. Another feature of 5G is something called persistent authentication, 
where you are recognized by virtue of your device on the network all the time. And if it's detected that there's been an interruption in the security built into your device, your device will then be blocked and isolated from the rest of the 5G network. There's, it's not possible to mimic or fake a device on 5G as it is today on 4G and 3G networks. So 5G is offering that level of security. Blockchain is the ability to take a, a file, break it into millions of pieces, and spread it out across the world on the internet. Imagine the one reason why we have so many data breaches today and they're ongoing is because enterprises, whether they're private corporations, public corporations, or government agencies, academic institutions, healthcare facilities, they store most of our data in central databases. That's like all the fish in a barrel. So all the hacker has to do is steal the file. They don't even need to decrypt it. A healthcare information system database is easily sold on the dark web, sight unseen, for about a half a million dollars. And at least one to two of those are stolen in the United States every day, every single day. That's scary. Oh, it is. I mean, this is why blockchain is important, because what blockchain does is it takes that centralized approach and decentralizes it, breaking it up into billions of pieces, encrypting each little one. It's almost like taking a fish out of that barrel, chopping it into billions of pieces. Can you tell me if it's a scale or a gill or a fin? No, because it's all chopped up into fairly readable, you know, understandable pieces. What that and, makes me think of, like in my mind when I'm listening to you, hmm. it makes me think of how, remember when we used to shred stuff, but it only made these little long shreds. And then all of a sudden there was like crisscross done. And there's yes. all these different things they do. But That's based exactly. on what you're telling me, guess what? You're still shredding in that same garbage can, though. So all they have to do is get that. So basically what you're telling me, it's like if you had a shredder that chopped into the teeniest little pieces, and then every one of those pieces was in a garbage can that could be anywhere all over. They'd have to travel all over the world, know exactly what garbage can, pick out that teeny little piece and put it together, which could not happen. Guess what the chances of that are for a hacker to figure out just for one of those little pieces? I don't know. One in 15 trillion. Okay, then. So now multiply that by having to find all those pieces around the world, and, and you're immediately you know, into numbers insurmountable, which is why we say that blockchain is, uh, for all intents and purposes, impenetrable. Now, it doesn't mean somebody can't get your chain code and possibly break these things. But again, your chain code, the code that gets you in at all this, is also stored in the blockchain. So there's so many levels of security and what we call channels of uh, cryptography that are in this blockchain implementation that uh, it's virtually impossible to break and pull this data out. It's really exciting because for the first time, nobody can really duplicate your DNA for your human body, right? That's one of the reasons why we use biometrics to some extent. Well, they can't duplicate your blockchain codes either to come up and try to assemble all these billions of pieces together. Just to come back with that will, that estate plan, your income tax filing, even your votes. And the beauty of this is the ability then for vendors like your doctors and healthcare facilities to no longer have to store your data on their central computers. They can now store your data, which by the way, this is my point about laws catching up to technology, that data, those blood results, that x-ray test or uh, examination, those are your data. They don't belong to the hospital. They belong to you. Your credit card transactions belong to you. Your social security number, which you've given out on every credit app since, you know, probably the 1990s, belongs to you. And the laws are finally emerging that say it's your data, you own it. You just don't have a place to put it. Well, now you do, you know, with the technologies I, that we're working with. Mm -hmm. I really do love that. You know, so one of the things I love to do on the show is when I'm talking to people, Every single industry, doesn't matter what it is, right? 
there are myths that surround it, right? We all think we know what we know, what we don't know, right? You know, yeah. you don't know what you don't know, but we all kind of think we do. And I kind of think this is a topic that everybody has an opinion on, right? What they think and what they think they know. So one of the things I love to do when I have not just an expert, but an authority, and you are more than an expert, you are the authority on this. Let's kind of talk about myths and debunking them. So what would you say is a common myth about data privacy that we can just debunk right now? Well, I, I think it's, it's the answers in the question. I think most people feel that they have no privacy online. And to take that one step further, that you can't recover control over your online identity as a result. That is a myth. And mostly because of what we see in new technologies and emerging laws, they work hand in hand. In reality, you can't regain control of the information stolen by criminals, hackers. And as some of the break-ins in the last couple of years have shown, people who actually work inside legitimate organizations like Amazon who are authorized to actually access your data, stealing it. But what we will see over time is this black marketeering of your information uh, to third parties, to the dark web and things like that, because uh, you can put your information back in the corral, just like the horse. You can put them back in the corral. Now, to give you an idea, this isn't going to happen overnight. That's, that's true. Uh, we're not going to put all the horses back in the corral overnight. But as I remind people, when the Civil War ended and three more amendments were added, including providing the right to vote to people, it would still take another 50 years from roughly 1865 to 1920 for women to get the vote. And surprisingly, that is almost an entire generation of people who moved on, passed on, whatever else. We're gonna see that here. We need to start protecting our data today with tools like we've talked about, so that as people wash out of the system, right? Probably through death over the next 30, 40 years, this idea of no privacy online and your data running around out there will end. Now, there are some things that you can do in the meantime, like that the laws are providing for where you can actually write to your providers, whether it's a, a healthcare provider or a credit card company, or as we recently read this past week, Facebook, and ask them to purge your personal information that they do not need in order to conduct business with you. And let's face it, once a credit card company has assigned you an account number and a credit limit, all they need to do is aggregate the transactions each month, send you a bill and you pay it. They don't need your social security number or even your address anymore because everything is digital. So it's gonna take time for this. And ultimately, this is a global perspective. There's a global impact measurement on this thing. There's a debate going on right now about COVID-19 vaccination certificates and where they should be maintained. And people believe they have a right to data privacy and therefore they should keep it. Well, where are you gonna keep it? You're gonna put it up on Google Drive, iCloud? Those are all vulnerable, exposed, not fully encrypted, not but you know, blockchain-based solutions, that means that you're just kind of perpetuating the issue. So the technology we're into enables people to maintain that storage space for themselves. You know, when I hear all this stuff, something comes to mind for me. It's kind of a debate my husband and I have, and this is kind of a little sidebar a little bit, but I'm actually interested since you're an authority. But one of the things that my husband and I keep going back and forth and back and forth on is how in the last, I don't know how many years, all of a sudden, you know, ancestry, you know, 23 and all of this stuff about having that done. And one of the things that I think is very interesting is that through that, after you do it, they ask you to let them have so much of your information Mm -hmm. for certain things. I mean, now true great things have happened. You know, they've found criminals now that they didn't know. There's a lot of great things that can and have happened 
but thinking long term of what that can do. I mean, my husband, he is an absolute no. <laughs> he like he will not do it. Like, you know, so for me, I did do it last year mostly because to be honest, one of my relatives found a relative and then they didn't know which side of the family it was on and they were like, "Patty, will you do it and then we'll know," right? You know, and so I did, but then they asked me that question and that's how it came up. I'm like, "Honey, do you think I should let them have this information. Look at all these things they say they're going to be able to do. They could cure disease. I mean, all this information. But here's the thing that's interesting. I'm in marketing and we talk about data all the time and how, you know, the more data you have, the behaviors of, you know, your target audience and how we can utilize that information, right? But this is kind of about your real personal stuff. This isn't like, oh, do I, what magazines do I read? And, you know, that kind of stuff. This is really like important stuff. So, it takes me back to a conversation that you and I had in the very, very beginning about the goal of what you're doing, right? And I remember you talking to me about something that is very, very important about this platform that you have, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that that is very, very important because when you told me about it at first i just thought it was interesting and i'm fascinated about things and i'm especially fascinated about things with data but once you actually explained it to me on what that would do for my family i was blown away and that's when i knew that i really not i wasn't really thinking sponsorship then but i just knew that i needed to help get the word out mm -hmm. so let's kind of talk about that i would really really love to be able to really kind of talk about what that is and about the family organizer plus let's talk a little bit about that and then i'm going to kind of talk about how much of that in the beginning i know that exacta corporation is a woman-owned company mm -hmm. i love the story of that so i think one kind of leads into the other so sure. let's just go there okay well, I think, uh, as I indicated, Wolf was the founder of, of Exacta in 1976. At the time, I was 16 years old. So there I am spilling some beans of, of personal information out on the web. You don't know what year I was born in. Uh, but uh, he passed away, as I said, two years ago after a long battle with uh, stage four gastric cancer. But he had been married uh, to Liga, his wife, for 50 years. And as any of your listeners who own a business know, it's a partnership through and through. And she stepped in and appreciated the values we had enshrined in our concept of Family Organizer Plus. And I don't want to emphasize the product right now, but one of the things that I envisioned with the Family Organizer or family was family itself. It occurred to me in light of all the social networking wahoo going on out there that they're all designed around individuals. The internet has probably been the most destructive technical element to the foundations of family as any technology in the past could have possibly been because what it does is it focuses on the individual and the individual then develops their own relationship, whether that individual as an adolescent or a pre-adolescent or a young adult has had any kind of upbringing or rearing to, to support responsible living on the web or responsible cyber etiquette or any of that. And so that's why we see people feeling absolutely no resistance in themselves to say the most hideous things out there in social media. And at the same time, I remember when parents kind of were hands off on computers because their kids supposedly knew more than they did. And so technology has really put a wedge in family relationships, and yet families are the fundamental social network of all history. So we looked at Family Organizer as really initially a platform for families, a way for you to confidentially communicate in chatting and a little later this year, video conferencing with just your family uh, knowing that what you're saying to them is as private as what you would say at, at the breakfast table. And providing some other capabilities like 
document storage, as I said, but putting it up on the blockchain. So you can have confidence that all of your records are private. Uh, people have raised the issue of the photographs. I mean, we, we allow you to store everything. Photographs, the blockchain can be used for uh, audio files, video files. People don't want to put all their family photos up on Facebook, even if they have restricted them to their group of immediate contacts. Facebook has admitted to now analyzing all those using facial recognition and creating all sorts of databases on the, again, the biometric profiles of the people who are identified. All of these impinge upon our rights to privacy and they impact our ability to build strong families. So Liga could relate to some of these things. She saw the imbalance between a woman's professional and personal lifestyles or what I call, and we call here at Exacta, the life work balance. We emphasize the priority of life over work, opposing the alternative, more popular phrase of work life balance commonly used, right? So uh, she embraced it. She stepped up to do that. And that endorsement of going forward allowed us to expand beyond the commercial sector with our CRM software and into the consumer market, which Exacta had never had experience before doing. And that product uh, was introduced on a crowdfunding site earlier this year, kind of just to test the waters and see what people thought. The feedback was great. We went back and, and redid some more interface changes and things like that. But at the end of the day, we're very proud of the product and the fact that this could have a revolutionary social impact in ways that people, especially parents, have been scratching their head and say, I mean, we can all recall stories of teen and young people committing suicide because of things like cyberbullying. Our software allows the parents, for example, to monitor their children's social media feeds without having to friend them on those social platforms. A lot of that's great. Oh, absolutely. Because the kids don't want mom and dad necessarily being their friends on social networking. But at the same time, what the kids are doing to get around it is they're just creating other other personas and creating other social media accounts without their parents seeing it. This would eliminate that because there's no need to publicly embarrass kids. And now that excuse of why I didn't see this coming, I didn't know. I wish I had known my kid was being bullied. I wish I knew my daughter was being harassed, whatever it might be, they can now have visibility of that through our software. And again, everything within Family Organizer stays in Family Organizer. Oh, I like that. Oh, it's absolutely wonderful because you can share data, for example, you can share your health records with your health uh, providers. They can write your health records to your storage area, your Family Organizer blockchain. And then you can share that with other health providers. Imagine, imagine the process today. You know, you end up in another healthcare system or another doctor. Please sign this HIPAA form. Please do this. Please do that. And then you might get the medical records in an hour or two at best, usually a day or two, maybe a week. And it's instantaneous now. Why? Because you have your health records. You have your health records and you grant access to that personally. How many times a month do you think you need to grant access to your records? In reality, I think there's a lot of things. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I text my husband to say, honey, can you send me a copy of your insurance card? Or, you know, oh, I want to make sure every time I write a new clause or change something in my will, you know, now I have to do all this. I mean, just being able to have those things. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe I remember you telling me that even within that family, you get to decide who sees what, when, and how, right? Right. There's open records within the immediate family. There's the restricted records, which uh, are up on the blockchain that are, by the way, one of the benefits of blockchain is it can't be changed. So that's why this is really great. Because if, if your Department of Transportation sends you an electronic version of your driver's license, that baby can go right into your blockchain not copied by you there, but actually written there by the Department of Motor Vehicles. Just like the hospital or the doctor, the urgent care can write that medical information to your blockchain. Then you share it with whom you want. And that's the critical part of this, that trusted provider platform. Not every provider is trusted by no means, right? Like your um, tax accountant 
might write your tax filings, but doesn't need to see everything else on your blockchain. You can cut this a whole lot of different ways. Well, your executor of your estate may need to see things that everybody else doesn't need to see. I mean, there's a there's a example. lot of different things, right? That's a perfect so, example. And you can restrict who and what they have access to. I love that. So I got to tell you, I know how much you love this. I'm, since we've started partnering together, I have learned so much. But let's actually talk about a little bit about Family Organizer Plus, because it's not the only thing that Exacta Corporation has. But I think that one of the things about it that I really love is how affordable you were able to make it, right? Oh. You know, because the reality is we don't usually talk about pricing or anything like that. But what I do believe is important to say, and we will have all the links below. So if you're listening, you just get to look below and you'll have all the links that are going to take you there. But right. the reality is, after I listened to you, I thought, oh, this is going to be so expensive. And what I will say is I literally spend more than that when I go to Starbucks. So, <laughs> you know, and so when you think about that, what is the price of peace of mind? Okay. Right? That's, what a great way to phrase that question. So as we laid out the model, the business model for Family Organizer Plus, a little bit different than most other packages that are out there where you're well you can buy a license and it used to be you get a disc and you put it in your computer then they went to download and now they're into software as a service so it's all done off the web this is sort of a subscriber model initially for families and we've been able to get the price down to about a dollar 66 67 cents per month per person so with a family of six where you'd have parents, maybe a couple of children, maybe your grandparents live with you. They can all be part of that one family unit. We provide a standard six family member license for $10 a month. Now, there's some restrictions to that. For example, that will only give you about 50 gigabytes of storage space up on the blockchain. But ultimately, storage is cheap. And even if I was to double that to a retail price of about $25 a month, it's still a bargain for a lot of people when you add up the cost of this calendaring program and whatever else you're putting out there in terms of utilizing records management, OneDrive, iCloud, you're paying something for everybody that this replaces. But the, uh, the model then, as we, I would call that the early adopter pricing model. Our goal is too, to tie these trusted providers in and charge them a fee for the right to store and access information from family organizers. So you scratch your head and say, well, who's going to get the hospitals to send their data to you, right? They've got the, I'm counting on the class action lawyers out there. Because as I said at the beginning, companies to this day have gotten a pass when it came to data breaches. They'll say, oh, we're sorry, we've done this to protect ourselves, and we're going to give you two years of free monitoring on your credit record. Well, that's not a solution. That only perpetuates the problem. That's a Band-Aid. That, that's, that's what a, I call a Band-Aid. It's a Band-Aid for an arterial flow bleed. I mean, this thing is it's not holding anything down. And what happens, though, with us is that we would charge the vendors to do this, and eventually the cost of families will be free completely underwritten by the vendors. I love that. I think this is really what needs to happen, right? A lot of it is about educating the masses. That's what's really important. I love that you're so involved with that. And I have to tell you, people are talking about it too, because I keep hearing about all these accomplishments and all of these things that are happening and that people are talking about it. When people are talking about it, like, you know, they want to know, right? They want Thank to you. know. So can you share with us a recent accomplishment that you achieved? Well, I'm very proud of the fact that in our community here in Milwaukee, we have a very vibrant business community. In fact, it's been a tech hub since probably the turn of the last century, right? We, we pioneered a lot of technology when it came to trains and transportation. In fact, Milwaukee was known as the breadbasket of America. They, the, the saying was, we feed the world because all of the upper plains and farms that would ship their stuff to our ports and then it would go out to the world. Allen Bradley, which today is Rockwell Automation, some great automation robotics companies are located here. 
uh, and some great banking uh, industries are located here. So this has been a hotbed of technology development. In fact, Foxconn is building and has already constructed a good portion of their largest plant in North America right here about 10, 15 miles south of Milwaukee. And I have story that there are other high-tech companies moving in here. Uh, so with that said, we have a very tech-savvy community and we have a very active business journal magazine. I think it's published in 42 or 43 other cities around the country. And they recognize Family Organizer Plus as personal technology of the year. An wow, article, congrats. They just announced it. The article's out in today's issue. And uh, we're very excited about that recognition, even though I would consider us in beta, kind of in a beta stage of the product as we really, really uh, refine some of the features in response to our early adopters, by the way. People who sign on and are paying that $10 a month or so, they are actually able to feed their input directly to me and to the development team here. And that's very exciting. Imagine having been able to talk to Bill Gates and Paul Allen back in 1978 about the DOS operating system or eventually Windows. That's where we're at on this. And of course, there's nothing else out there. When you talk to people about 5G and blockchain, their heads explode because they really don't understand the things we're talking about. But the committee that was elected by the Business Journal to evaluate all the uh, all the nominations for these awards, and there were 11. Some of them went to big companies like General Electric Healthcare, GE Healthcare, Northwestern Mutual Insurance. Here we are, a little exacto, privately held company, been around 45 years, doing our little personal organizer software for the family with what well, I think the strength of our software isn't in the technology. It is, but it isn't. I think it's in the fact that we're emphasizing family values and the need to come up with a real solution to balancing that life work compromise it, that your listeners and I balance. I mean, we make those decisions constantly every day. And this is the tool to do that. I love that. What a great way to segue into the next thing. So I know the how important this is to you. I know in the conversations that we have, right? And I know that you're continuing to move forward with new things and better ways and that you're committed to that. And so is Exacta Corporation. And I love that. And that's something I can get behind. Mm -hmm. So how can the audience connect with Exacta? Well, we like to say in our literature, you can connect with us everywhere. And so our link, little link box has all the little icons for all the social media. But I'll tell you right now, the best place to go, obviously, is to our website. So www.exactacorp.com. And you'll see just Three images there that talk about our commercial product, Family Organizer Plus, and our consulting services that we do. We do a lot of custom software development for large corporations and state agencies. So we've done that for 45 years. I so that's one that. place. And you can go to the news uh, menu item. We don't have too many menu items. That's really easy to navigate. Go to news and our interns keep that up to date with all of the things we're doing on social media and our uh, I carry on a conversation each month on how to use software. I call it tamethe.com, which is really the name of the domain. It's also tamethe.com, which is all about empowering people to get control of the technology they feel they can't control, but in fact, they can. Obviously, we have pages on Facebook and LinkedIn. All you need to do is search for Exacta Corporation or Family Organizer Plus, and that will take you there. And of course, uh, we appreciate subscriptions. We have YouTube channels also, again, under Exacta Corp. So forth. just subscribe, like, connect, guarantee you we won't, we will not utilize your information like big tech does. We won't fill your box with a bunch of empty messages. And in fact, it's kind of an electronic manifestation of our guarantee, which I've never seen any other company in our industry do. If you spend an hour with us or you spend any time with us and we're and you're a client, we normally bill for our time. But if you found no value in that, there's no charge. I love that. I love a company that can stand behind the results that they have. And I absolutely love that this has been great information. I know people must have pages and pages, but here's what I'm going to say. Go to exactacorp.com, learn more information, but go to exactafamily.com and you can literally see about Family Organizer Plus platform. Those two things will get you what you need to start with. And then 
reach out, you know, and connect with them everywhere. You're going to be glad that you did. And more importantly, your family is going to be glad that you did. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dennis. I appreciate it so much for you taking the time and really kind of going in depth with us a little bit, kind of behind the scenes, mm -hmm. so to speak. You don't always get to get to the president of the corporation, and I appreciate that. I appreciate you sponsoring the magazine and our podcast. I look forward to a much long-term relationship with you, and I love the way you serve my community. Thank you. And it's great to be of service, and Patty. And really a pleasure to be here today. Thank you very, very much for the privilege, not only of being on your podcast, but the privilege to sponsor your magazine and your overall effort. Thank you so much. And to everybody out there listening, thank you so much for being a part of our community. Thank you for listening to the podcast, for reading our sister publication, the Marketing, Media, and Money magazine. So thank you for joining us. If you enjoyed today's episode, and I'm sure you did, please subscribe and review the podcast on your favorite listening platform. Until our next episode, have a phenomenal day, a phenomenal weekend. And remember, if your day is not phenomenal, you have the power to change it. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us today on the Marketing, Media, and Money podcast. To shorten your learning curve even more, make sure to grab your free copy of the Marketing, Media, and Money magazine at www.marketingmediamoney.com. I promise your business will thank you.